All right, in this video, we'll be looking at the regulation of the cell cycle, things that control the cell cycle in order to just keep the cells from just dividing whenever they feel like it. And so the first thing that we're going to look at, well, there's a nice picture of the cell cycle again. Um, and remember, the cell cycle is just the normal life cycle of the cell. It ends in division where you have two identical daughter cells. It's made up of those phases there that you see, interphase, M phase. All right, and so the first type of internal mechanism is called a checkpoint, and there are three checkpoints that regulate the cell cycle progression. Think of it as like a gate, and in order to get to the other side of that gate, you have to have some sort of some sort of criteria that allows you to pass. If you've ever been through like a checkpoint that from law enforcement, they are looking to make sure that people that go through their checkpoint have a driver's license and proof of insurance and that sort of thing. And if you don't have those things, they usually won't let you go beyond that checkpoint before writing you a ticket. And so this is a checkpoint basically to ensure that the cell is dividing properly and all things are in order. There are three checkpoints in the cell cycle. We'll start with the G1 checkpoint. So here's the G1 checkpoint. There's a nice little list of things there for you to look at. Basically, this happens at the end of the G1 phase. Uh, checks for cell size. Is the cell big enough to divide? Does the cell have enough nutrients to go through division? Division is a very uh, energy intensive process. Are there the uh, appropriate growth factors there? Um, are all, is the DNA intact? You know, is the DNA, um, everything good with the DNA? Sometimes this checkpoint has been called the point of no return because at this checkpoint, after this checkpoint, the DNA will be replicated and there's no need to replicate DNA unless the cell is going to divide. And so typically after this checkpoint, cell division will follow through. Some cells never get past this checkpoint because they don't divide for whatever reason. Next is the G2 tech checkpoint. This happens at the end of the G2 phase. Uh, it's a DNA replication. Uh, is DNA replication complete? Is there any DNA damage? Because if there's DNA damage or if replication is not complete, it doesn't make sense for the cells to divide. If there is DNA damage, it can cause a faulty cell, which is a lot of wasted energy and time. And so this is a checkpoint to make sure everything is ready for division. This is the last place right before M phase begins, which is mitosis and cytokinesis. And then the M spindle checkpoint. Um, I've called this the anaphase checkpoint before. It's fine either way. And the basically the check here is to check that each of the chromosomes is attached to a spindle at the centromere. So in that metaphasal plate, making sure everything is hooked up before the spindle fibers start to pull. It's kind of like if you were pulling a boat with a truck, you would want to make sure that the boat was hooked up before you started pulling. It wouldn't make any sense to do that. If it was hooked up in a bad way, you might tear up the boat or the truck or both, and it wouldn't be a good thing. And so this is making sure everything is hooked up correctly in order to initiate the next step of the process, which is the separation of the sister chromatids. So another type of cell cycle regulation is called cyclins. Cyclins are groups of related proteins that are associated with specific phases of the cell cycle. So there are lots of different kinds of cyclins. We're going to talk about cyclins in general. You won't need to know any sort of specific, um, specific interaction other than cyclins control the cell cycle. And the way that they do that is by fluctuating in their amount of concentration. All right. So uh, if there's a lot of cyclin, then the cell is moving toward division. So more cyclins equals more division, right? Promoting cell division. When those cyclins begin to go away or the degradation of those cyclins, that is inhibiting the cell cycle. And so the amount of cyclin in the cell will is directly proportional to whether or not that cell is going to divide. Uh, and the way this works is there's another type of molecule called a CDK, which CDK stands for cyclin dependent kinase. And cyclin dependent kinase is an enzyme that is always present in the cell. And cyclin doesn't work unless it binds up with that CDK. And once it binds with that CDK, it's able to do its work. All right. It becomes this other thing once it, uh, once it binds together. You can see this here as, you know, cyclin concentration goes up and down, but the CDK is an enzyme, right? And so it's going to always be around. 
So as more cyclin is being, as the concentration of cyclin increases in the cell, the CDK activity is going to be higher, right? Because this, they're going to join together. And then as cyclin goes away, CDK activity is going to go down with it. And that is going to, you can see these regular kinds of ebbs and flows control whether or not the cell is dividing. It's like a clock. And once the clock gets to a certain point, the cell will initiate cell division. Here's an example, a specific example of this got cyclin that's being made, cyclin accumulation is increasing, binds with CDK, and, and they create something called MPF, which is um, maturation promotion factor, or I've seen it called mitosis promotion factor. I think maturation promotion factor is the actual correct thing. And so this thing will actually, this MPF will initiate cell division, and then at a certain point in the mitosis, and for this particular one, it's actually at the... Um, spindle checkpoint. Once it reaches that checkpoint, then cyclin will start to degrade and go away. So cycle has been completed. CDK will go back around and meet that new cyclin once the new cell cycle continues. So again, cyclin and CDK or CDK is required for cyclin to activate. And once it activates, it initiates cell division. And once cyclin starts to degrade, then cell division is over. Which kind of brings me to the next idea. So what happens when this isn't occurring? All right, so if there's some sort of problem with this, and that's what this aberrant cell division means. Maybe there's a cell that has, um, you know, not, didn't make the cut. It had some sort of damage to its DNA or something along those lines. And so there is a tumor suppression a mechanism called apoptosis, which we talked about. That's just programmed cell death where the cell recognizes that it's an issue or maybe nearby cells recognize that that cell is an issue and then we'll communicate with it that it needs to initiate um, cell death to prevent this DNA alteration from continuing. Cells that are unable to do this end up being cancer cells. And so a cancer cell is basically a cell that is unable to regulate its cell growth. It could be that those proteins that break down cyclin are broken now because of that DNA mutation. Cyclin is no longer being degraded, so the cell thinks that it constantly must be dividing. And there's other things that could be going on there, but essentially a cancer is just an unregulated cell growth where the cell continues to divide even though all the environmental and cellular cues are saying it's time to stop dividing. The Inside the cancer cell, it doesn't know that. It just keeps dividing, and this can cause significant issues. It's always sick. Cancer is always caused by a mutated gene. Uh, it disrupts the checkpoints. It disrupts cyclin degradation. There's something there that is causing uh, the normal cell cycle checkpoints and normal cell cycle uh, regulators to be out of place. Um, it could be a G protein. Uh, I don't think I have a picture of that. It could be a G protein where the G protein is not realizing that it's touching another cell, and so it doesn't think that it has to stop growing, and so it creates a big mass of cells. And so there's a number of things that go on here, but essentially the cell is not able to break itself, and so it will just keep growing, and that can cause a significant damage to the surrounding tissues.